So in the first video, we talked about the importance of identifying your knowledge gaps, right? If you know where knowledge gaps are, basically, if you know what you don't know, and if you discover what you didn't know, you didn't know, it can get complicated, right? But if you know what those gaps are, then you can fill those gaps with knowledge. In this way, when you study and when you write your next exam, the chances are quite high that you will perform at a higher level because you'll know more. And it's just not about knowing, but you will understand more. Now, the aim of this new video here is to show you how you will know what the gaps are. And there's many ways that you can do this. I will give you three different ways here. It is very likely that you'll come up with your own ways. And I really applaud that. If you think about the ways that would work for you, and if you discover something different than what I'm giving you here, well, all the power to you. That's amazing. But what I want to do here is to give you three different ways that I think will work well for most students. So let's explore what those ways are. So here I would say that the first method, which is to form a study group, is very likely to be the most efficient way of identifying your knowledge gaps. So let's remember one thing. Your knowledge gaps are in your head. You don't know what they are. And the only way for you to be aware of what those knowledge gaps are is actually to, to tell a story. I don't believe that any kind of studying will completely allow you to discover what those gaps are. So that's why that forming a study group with obviously, you know, a few other students and you telling that story, you will become aware of your own, you know, quote unquote, ignorance. And ignorance here is not an, an insulting term in any way. It just, it's just what you don't know. If you ignore something, you just don't know it, right? It's important to be aware of what you don't know. And here's what's going to happen here. And I, I would hope that this would, what would happen in your group is that your teammates might correct you. They might remind you of important details, something that you might have missed, overlooked, or thought it was not important, or maybe didn't know at all. And obviously, you'll be asked to do the same to them as they tell their story. That's the power of a study group. And I really believe that if you do this consistently, exam after exam, with maybe the same group when you get to become quite comfortable with these students, I really think this is going to help, to help you quite a bit. So the next method something you might want to do solo, but you know, again, if you do this as a part of a study group, you know, probably is better. But in this case here is not just telling your story, but it's also writing that story and comparing that story with a source. So first let's concentrate and let's focus on the writing part, right? It has been demonstrated over and over and over again by many studies that writing is important. For example, if, you look at, if we look at this quote from an article, it says writing, for example, allows the writer to concretize abstract ideas and to connect the dots in their knowledge. It's not me saying this. This was written in 2003. That's a while ago. But basically what they're saying is that if you write, you will be able to identify what your gaps are, right? So that's an important part of that. Now, the second part of writing and compare is now to compare, is to look at what you wrote. Let's say you want to talk about the DNA molecule and you think, okay, well, I am going to write everything I know about this DNA molecule, 
right? And then after that, well, I need to compare with its source in order to identify what I forgot to write or I didn't know I should have written. And I would say that Wikipedia is a great tool to verify that, to compare your current knowledge. There's a lot of information on Wikipedia, and please let's understand one thing is that this, this tool is in no way perfect, and it's okay like that. But let's just keep in mind that it's not always 100% accurate, but when you think about it, no source really is, and also it can be biased, right? So with that in mind, however, it's important to know that Wikipedia is a great tool to verify that. So what you would do, basically, is to write everything you know about the DNA molecule, right? And then after that, look in Wikipedia and compare. And obviously, there's going to be way more information in Wikipedia, and it'll be your job to sort through that, to know, well, I should know about this, I don't need to know about that, it's too advanced, this is what your level, understand what your level is. And when you know that, you've got a great tool here to understand and to fill in those gaps. So this next method, the third one, is more tech-oriented and maybe has a little bit of controversy because it's about artificial intelligence. It's not the fact that it's artificial intelligence, but maybe it's because I use um, ChatGPT in order to verify things. And I think it's a great, great tool. And you know, I think students would benefit from using it for good purposes, obviously. So let's see how we can use this tool. Okay, so let's use this chat GPT. I'm going to write my question here. So for example, explain to a non-majors biology student the the basic structure of DNA. Now I press enter, press enter, and now it's going to generate the answer. You'll see that. So there you go, it's thinking, and here comes the text. You can compare that answer with your own answer and then see what your gaps are. Is this, Is there anything you missed here? Still thinking a little bit here. It's going to dig a bit further and generate the rest. That's one way to use it. So here's another way you can use it. So you can, for example, ask ChatGPT to generate a multiple choice question and provide the answer about any subject. So in this case here will be, will be the basic structure of DNA but it can be anything basically. And it gives you, you know, a tool to study. You can generate many questions like that. So there you go. You ask for the right or correct answer and have, you know, hopefully this is all true and it gives you the answer. You see it generated a question, multiple choice and give you the answer. Now there's something else you can do. You know, you can dig a little bit further. You can ask another question. So you can ask as many questions as you want, basically. And in this case here, I'm asking to provide a multiple question, multiple choice question about the basic um, base pairing of the nucleotides. And as always, I ask for them to provide me with the answer. You don't need to look at the answer right away, right? But at least it gives you a tool to study. And there you go. It generates the questions, A, B, C, D, and gives you the answer right there. So in conclusion, I hope that those two videos were useful to you. And I hope that you realize that those simple ways, simple methods of studying can be of great benefit to you when it comes to studying for an exam. And it's not just for exams, by the way, right? We don't always need to study for exams. An exam is just like a, a test. But 
after each class, and I say this to my students all the time, after each class, as soon as possible, I really believe that students should tell the story of the, the class they've been in. It doesn't matter what class it is. It doesn't matter if it's mine or any other class for that matter. But if you need to understand some concepts, sometimes some are more complicated than others, you absolutely need to tell the story. And the more complicated the subject matter is, the more important it is to do this. And by doing this consistently, and consistency is key here, by doing this consistently, I really believe that your marks are going to get higher, at least 10% higher, possibly higher than that. But obviously, it takes some effort. Nothing, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch, as we say, right? So I hope that these two videos helped you understand how to fill those gaps, identify those gaps. And I would be very interested in hearing your feedback on this and let me know if that helped you at all.